Huge news, guys, for the new event in Hockey Ultimate Team. We've got fantasy hockey cards. This is the closest thing we've had to dynamic ratings in NHL, and it's a great set so far. Let's jump into all the news and what you need to know for this event for the next coming weeks. So the basic rundown is for every goal that a player scores or a win for every goalie, their cards will go up by one. So the Ilya Kovalchuk you see here with awesome card art, even though I hate the Kings, if he scores 20 goals this season or 19 goals this season, he will be a 99. Uh, the synergy points double if the player reaches 95. His maximum upgrade obviously is a 99. And this isn't just NHL players. It includes the SHL and Liga. Any games that they score in the regular season of those three leagues, those cards will go up by one. Taylor Hall, as you see here, obviously going to be really sought after. Uh, if he puts up, you know, 25 goals, you've got a fantastic card for basically the rest of the time you play Hut. So obviously we have a ton to unpack here. But here are the fantasy hockey cards that have been released so far. We've got the 79 James Neal coming off a really rough season. The thing I need to mention here, guys, is I'm to give you guys a good, uh, you know, pick on who to go after and things like that. You're really just going to have to know a lot about hockey. I'm going to try and give you guys my best thoughts here, but a lot of these cards, um, you know, aren't going to upgrade too much. They kind of went safe with this. This is not like something we've seen before other than maybe the limited all-star game ones where they did go up based on how they performed in the skills competition. But this is a risky one because essentially if, you know, Milan Lucic goes off in Calgary early on in the season, scores 10 goals randomly, you've got yourself an 89 and that wasn't really, you know, anticipated. So we've got James Neal in Edmonton um, at 79, flip-flopping with Milan Lucic here. So he'll be in Calgary. James Neal is a good goal scorer. Last season he basically sat out half the time. So uh, the Neal one I could see, you know, maybe he gets on the line in the top six and uh, it performs pretty well. Then we've got the Shea Weber. Um, he does. He is usually good for about double-digit goals. So, again, you're looking at something decent there. But that's going to be a long one. The defenseman ones are going to be pretty tough. Jimmy Howard, um, he's playing for Detroit. So, I mean, it's going to be tough to come by a lot of wins for Jimmy Howard. Um, I would probably avoid him. Uh, Tavo Turvinen is a really interesting choice because he could be a really big breakout candidate and go off. Um, that is probably going to be one of the more sought-after cards as well. The 77 David Krejci is meh. Uh, the 72 Taylor Hall. This is pretty much the crown jewel of this event so far. Because realistically, he's as long as he plays the full season, he's pretty much a lock for 30 goals. Um, but he could essentially reach, you know, 26 goals. 27 goals, sorry. Late February. So you could have a 99 fairly early when you consider, you know, team of the year and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Chris Letang, he would be a good defenseman because he's starting at 82. Um, if he does pot a few goals early, right D are really weak in this game uh, so far at launch. So he would be a great card to get. Um, Ryan Johansson, uh, not bad either. Looks like he has decent stats as far as skating and shot goes to start out. Um, Nashville's not a terrible team, so he could put up some goals. Seth Jones as well. Seth Jones would be a great card just because... If he can get five goals even, you know, he's bumped up to an 88. And again, like I said about Chris Letang, he's a right defenseman. There's not very many, and he's huge. So that would be a fantastic one to get. Ivan Barbashev, nothing really to see here. Uh, Migu Kosa, that would be a SHL one, so or a Liga one. Um, not sure how well he would do in that. I'm just not very well versed in that. Uh, then Milan Lucic, obviously. But then they, all, they also have some prospect items. These are definitely... Um, a lot more interesting. So we've got uh, Henry Okaharju for now the Buffalo Sabres. Um, you got to go after who's going to get shots in this. Martin Neckhash um, is extremely highly rated, if like, you know, touted. If he could crack ca Carolina's camp this season, that could be a fantastic one because he already starts at 79. Eli Tolvanen is one of the best European goal scorers. So, again, it all depends on playing time. Philip Zadina as well. If these guys crack their roster, um, you know, Nylander, he was a bust so far for Buffalo, but maybe, like, Stroma change of pace is, is you know, much better. And then Cal Peterson, he's going to back up Jonathan Quick. So, that's tough. 
Moving on here, we're going to go into how you get these sets and cards. So it's going to uh, operate a lot like how the classic uh, event did work. It's on for two weeks. So, so again, you can trade 50 gold players in for a gold collectible. So that stays the same. So gold is still the currency. Um, Fantasy Aki, uh, you have a trade in six gold collectibles for a 33% chance at a random fantasy player. I would really avoid that one. Um, then you get a Fantasy Aki choice set. So <clears throat> for week one, it does look like there's going to be more stuff released throughout because, again, it indicates week one here. So look for more content next week. Um, so you trade in gold collectibles, 16 of them for a uh, choice, one of three for a fantasy hockey player. That's risky as well. Uh, and then 18 here. 18 would get you the Ilya Kovalchuk Master Set item. He's starting at 80. Now, he ha fell out of favor in L.A. pretty late in the season there and, you know, wasn't even able to crack the lineup. But, I mean... You know, he's just got to score 10 to have, a, you know, an 80 overall. But these things are, you know, going to go for... These are going to shoot up in price now. Just looking at the gold collectibles. Let's see if there's any under 50,000. And there is still here, but that looks to be the going price. 45, I see a lot here. Um, I would probably just go and scoop up any that are around that price. I would think that after... Yeah, see, these are all just getting bought instantly. So, 45,000. And quick math on that for the Kovalchuk then, because it requires 18. If we say it stays at 50,000, um, that's going to take you 900k. Not worth it in my opinion. Um, it is fun. That's a lot of coins for a maybe, although the card does look sick. Um, then we've got the Fantasy Hockey Collectibles into Gold Collectibles set. Let's take a look here. So uh, you turn in all of these and you get a Gold Collectible untradeable obviously as it states here and then fantasy hockey prospect sec trading a gold collective for a choice of a hockey prospect to be honest these aren't bad again if you just watch you know training camp over the next week or so um that could be insanely beneficial again if nekash create makes the team um which he should uh, or even tolvanen you're looking at a very good card because he's only got to pot a few goals to be you know viable very viable early on right um, so this is definitely one of the coolest things that they've done in quite some time. And again, it just goes back to what I was saying earlier about the Hut team. You know, a new new guys coming in at EA last year um, and kind of freshening up the content. This is an awesome thing. This is the closest thing we have to dynamic ratings. And it, you know, just gets you more interested in the games. I guarantee you, I'm not a Devils fan at all. I could care less. But if I get that Taylor Hall, I'll be checking into some Devils games throughout the season. Um, it's just an awesome event, and uh, I'm really excited to see what, what is in store for the rest of it. Now, there is some other stuff that we do need to discuss here. Um, I do want to mention the new Hut Champs, um, because Hut Champs is starting here. Uh, my internet is still causing me issues, so I'm unable to play currently. Um, I have been able to log in and whatnot, but I'm not able to play. So uh, if you've missed my streams and whatnot, it's because I haven't been streaming, and I do apologize, but I should be back next week. But if you look at the prizing for Hut Champs, Big changes to Hut Champs here. So you're looking at uh, uh, these are these are the rewards for the for the season. You get the o the 88 overall Oshi all the way for placing um, all the way down here. That is the new card. So that if you get inside the top five, you get the 88 TJ Oshi. Six to ten gets 87. Eleven to twenty gets the 86. And then that's it. So top 20 are the only ones that get the cards. It is untradeable. So a new change to Hut Champs is that you are, unfortunately, not able to trade them. Now this does one of two things. A, it makes it so players can't just use multiple accounts to get this card and make millions of coins. Um, a lot of the Hut Champs cards early on go for over a million because they are highly rated, right? Um, but now, as you see here, they're untradeable. I mean, you're not going to be able to use them. You're not going to be able to do that. So it should cut down the... You know, multiple top players trying to sneak in with fake accounts and whatnot. And even if they do, uh, I mean, they're just getting an, an untradeable card on another account. That, that would be a gigantic waste of time and really hilarious and embarrassing for the guy that does it. But again, um, untradeable, I love I loved this change in my opinion. The last thing I want to talk about, guys, is wait on, if, if you're free to play or even if you have a ton of coins, I would just wait a little while 
to see how the market settles down. This is going to be it, my my prediction on this is that this is going to blow up the market in the sense that it's going to be so expensive to get those gold collectibles because this is a extremely new and cool set. Um, there might not be a ton of cards that you're super interested in, but the Taylor Hall, the Seth Jones, um, you know, even the James Neal sneaky value there. Uh, just the fact that they go up by every goal, um, it's just really cool idea. I love it, and I can see the market just being really, really tight on changing how much the value is for the gold collectibles. And especially if there's a new set that comes out next week um, of new cards, it's going to be even more expensive because they're just going to stay. So uh, I don't know, man. I would be, I would just be careful before you spend all your money. Usually by the end of the event is when you, you know, those go down in price. Um, but since the gold collectibles have been used in back-to-back, -back, you know, events, I would I could see a lot of people hoarding them for a new event. So just be careful with it. I would still use the gold cards, the gold player items to make them. It is untradeable, I know. But um, again, I it's the 72 Taylor Hall. You've just packed an insane valued card. And if you want to go after the Kovalchuk again. In my opinion, risky, but 10 goals at least he's going to get. It's just like he had a really rough last season, but that's a sick-looking card, and everyone loves Ilya, so it's going to be expensive to go after him. But again, 900K at the current value, guys. So let me know what you think of this event, and um, yeah, leave a comment in the section comment section down below. I want to hear what you guys think. And again, subscribe if you do like the content. I will be back again if there's any changes or new content being released, and I should be back on Twitch next week. Thanks for watching, guys.